it is Thursday at 5.30. Welcome to the Well Season Kitchen. Hopefully everybody can hear us today. Uh, we found out after the fact last week that we were um, auditorily challenged. Uh, so uh, hopefully this week the sound is good. Um, yeah, so welcome to Thursday night in our kitchen. This is Chef Dennis. I'm Angie. Um, how are you? I'm okay. <laughs> You gotta be sunny and bright in front of cameras, right? right? Um, I'm not like I had a rough week, um, but as of this afternoon, it got better. You're back in business now. Back in business. I got my credit score back. Let's not get into details. Jeff Dennis had an incident with the credit bureau. They lost his credit history, sent him over the edge. He's trying to do yeah. some stuff, but they recovered it. So now he's got better credit than he ever did. I'm not sure if it was his <laughs> profile they actually recovered, but. Uh, Anyhow, that was, a, that was a good story. I like the story. He's back. Um, anyway, so uh, the, the credit is back. I'm hoping. Um, and then I'm, I'm here. This is my favorite activity all week. I'm, I'm always looking forward to this. Yes, this is the uh, best part. Hanging of out and drinking and cooking with friends because you literally can't do this at a restaurant. I mean, you you can, but I'm not allowed to drink because it's a liability. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, having a great time today and I'm ready to just work out some uh, appies. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this class. So our partner tonight is the uh, Ever Awesome Honor Co-op uh, that you guys I think are familiar with because we talk about them a lot here and they've um, helped us uh, with a couple of other cooking classes in recent weeks. And uh, tonight they're back and we're talking about holiday appetizers. And typically this time of year, we'd be doing all kinds of catering for parties and going yeah, yeah. to fabulous parties, and uh, there are no fabulous parties this time of year, but you can still make really delicious food at home, which is likely your only option right now to make really good food at home. And you can still make really delicious party food in small batches. You can make it ahead of time, you can drop it off at your friends' houses. Looks like we're going to be going back to some Zoom action <laughs> during the holidays. I, I have uh, two Christmas parties uh, that I'm doing on Zoom. You are? Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, we can't get together, so um, uh, we'll just uh, use the technology in this. I, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'll just keep on drinking until we'll get it over with. So nothing new there, really. No. Yeah. Um, so tonight's class is all about um, appetizers. That's uh, so my favorite thing to eat. I know, I love it. I love to have the spread on the table for most of the day. So you just, as you pass by, you know, you just replenish your mind, grab a couple. You don't have to sit and eat a whole plate of meal, uh, a whole, uh, whole big plate. Uh, especially in the summertime, I, I love it. But it's, um, since it's the party time, and I'll show you some uh, easy, easy appetizers uh, that it's not going to uh, take, take a lot of your time, so you can just sit with your guests in the living room and entertain them rather than a slave and away in the kitchen. But I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, so some of these can be made well ahead of time and uh, prepared in advance. So like I said, you can put together a little package and drop it off for your friends or family at their house so you can have a little, you know, a virtual cocktail party or whatever. Or you can make several of these all at once and turn it into a meal, which is like a really fun way to it is, dinner. and also these are not very, very complicated items, and uh, well, we have like five items that we're going to cook tonight, and I'll show you how easy and fast uh, you can put them together. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Cool, I'm so excited. all of the ingredients for tonight's class, uh, except for the live crab, uh, Dennis purchased from Otter Co-op. So I caught it. The crab? <laughs> it must have been a very slow crab. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got it. Yeah, that's another story yeah. for another day or for my third glass of wine, maybe. Yeah, when I got the crowds of the <laughs> Um So tonight we're working with Otter Co-op. And so uh, Dennis had his first co-op experience today. It was incredible. How was it? It was, it was so efficient. Everything was so efficiently placed. Like I got in, I didn't have to look for it. Well, I'm a professional grocery shopper though, so that's the other thing. I, I usually can navigate a store really well. But this one was particularly easy. I was done in 10 minutes. I had no idea about like, the layout of the store or anything. We just showed up. Uh, I talked to a few people. Uh, everybody was lovely. Yeah. Yeah, not like Safeway. I'm going to call you out of it now. 
Are we gonna start something? No. Look at the data. I was, I was in Safeway and I'm just walking, and there's this gentleman in uniform coming towards me, and I was looking for frozen puff paste here. I said, um, Do you have puff paste? He goes, like, I don't know. I'm like, Well, would you like to know? Like, do you know anybody that knows it? He goes, No, you should talk to customer service. I'm like, You are the customer service. <laughs> So none of that at all. Now lonely people, everybody was just like kept on moving and the cashiers were just like wiping things down around them. I didn't see anybody like sitting and lounging or, or everybody had a duty. You worked in the corporate offices then. That's where all the sitting and lounging happens. In in the in the big high tower. They know they know it a lot upstairs. <laughs> no. Nobody's allowed up there. No. Too many witnesses. <laughs> not, not a good thing. I'm joking, obviously. Yes, a lot of co op dentists was at the store on 248 Street today, which is my normal grocery store. That's where I do all my shopping. Did you go through the men's clothing or anything while you were there? No, I'm not. I have to be here. Okay, next time you're there, plan a little shopping extravaganza to the other side of the store where they have all the hardware and clothing. They sell like a wicked selection of ladies' shoes in case you're looking for a Christmas gift from me or something. I don't care. I'm just saying. Forget about that. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you a sharpie. I'll give sharpies to people. Oh, a black sharpie? I'll give you a sharpie. Oh, fancy. <laughs> it's very festive. So, um, anyhow, if you haven't been to Honor Co op, go to Honor Co op. They have their store, 248 store, or 248 Street, which is their main store. They have a new one on Parallel in Abbotsford, which is this big, beautiful store with their liquor store in the same parking lot. That's what I'm looking for. The Parallel store? The, the liquor store. The liquor store. <laughs> um, no, yeah. no, they, they told me there's a huge selection in there. So. Yeah, so at 248 Street, where you were today, the liquor store is in the same parking lot, and they have the best selection, yeah, I think, in Canada. Yeah. It's like phenomenal. It, it is a size, it's a huge, huge building. It is. I don't know if it's all liquor store in there. But. So speaking of liquor, uh, half, yeah. is generally around here. My favorite subject. So, um, Otter, as they uh, often do for us, they send some of their delicious Angry Otter wine. So we're drinking their Community Red, it's called. So this is a blend of Weigel, Pinot Noir, and Rondeau. It is delicious, light, and super Okay, then. Alright, uh, yeah. uh, they sent this in Chardonnay. And Nikki's having a little Chardonnay while she's working up front. It, it's a very light and a smooth drinking wine. I can, uh, I, I can sip on this all day without uh, being uh, all day. Kind of bothered. Chardonnay all day. Yeah. Yeah. So they have their own labels of wine. They're also working, I believe, and I could be, I, I may be wrong, but I think they're working on their own line of spirits and their own line of beers. So that's super exciting. But for now, at their liquor stores on 248 Street and at Parallel, you can get their community white. And if you're a member of our co-op, ten dollars for lifetime membership, you yeah, you need, you need to be a member. All the cool kids are members. So. Oh, so you can't shop if you're a member. Yes, you can. You oh. can shop, but when when you're a member, once you buy your ten dollar membership, then at the end of the year, you get um, equity back. So because you're a member, you're an owner. Right? So you're an owner partner in the co-op and at the end of the year they send you a check for a percentage of what you purchased. So if you bought... So what know, do I get back? Let's just skip the whole thing. You get nothing right now because you're not a member. So I know, but if I was a member. So for me this year, I'm going to get a really good check because of the liquor store. So well, the more you shop, the more you get shop? <laughs> yes, exactly. So you get a percentage of your sales back. So you get a percentage of your fuel, a percentage of your alcohol, and your food. So basically that's all I bought in my whole life. Booze, food, cats. That's it. Not in that order. But I'll get a check back. Probably. No, in that order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody's no. talking to you, David. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll get a check back. And then we can go spend that check and work beverages at our co-op liquor store. Incredible. So you that can... sounds like a great deal to me. Yeah. Take my 10 bucks. So, uh, I also just want to point this out, and I'm, I'm talking a lot right now, but no, no, it's Otter is awesome. I get and so this is their table magazine, and this is available here at Well Season right now. We're almost out, but I'll try and get some more from the co-op later this week. Um, and you can pick them up when you're doing your shopping at any of the co-op stores, the Otter Co-op, or any of the co-op stores actually, even in Alberta, Saskatchewan, um, here in BC, on the island I think has them. So in here are some really great recipes.
including some from me. Oh, I know. So I'm really excited to be uh, one of their chef partners in this magazine. So um, I you? yeah, I'm right there. Oh, that's you. Yeah, look how cute I am. Oh, right, right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so my recipes this month are for. Let's see. It's exciting. I just I just looked at this the other day. Jack dropped off my own personal copy. Son? Yeah, I saw it myself. To yourself? To myself. To Angie from Angie. So you are Angie. I mean, you are the greatest. <laughs> the only person I truly do love. Yeah. <laughs> so I made uh, this recipe for lemon garlic herb crusted pork loin with roasted beets and shallots glazed with balsamic and orange zest. So I'm on page um, 20. Swing by the store and get a signature. And I have another fantastic recipe further into the magazine. You're going to need more Sharpies to sign your own. <laughs> I know, right? I got the Sharpies. You guys yes. bring me some. Oh, here's my recipe here for, uh, wait for it. Somebody put Baba Ganoush recipe There's in Baba Ganoush in oh, here. Yeah. And it's not the original Baba Ganoush. It's not my, not my Baba Ganoush. Where did I go? Oh, maybe I got picked out. <clears throat> Anyhow, I do have another recipe. Happy, but I'll find it and get back to you. I'll, I'll report back on that because I know you're dying to know. So, if you're at, well, pick up one of these magazines or you can get it here. So, I don't even know where you're starting. You have so much on the go. There's going to be a link to the recipe so you can follow along in the comment section here. If you have questions while he's cooking, we are not going to talk about the holidays tonight. This is the last time I'm going to use the H word. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll break it again and again. How about that? I don't so, um, yeah, you have five recipes tonight. You have a lot of work to do. So if you have questions or comments, and you maybe just want to talk about the holidays, that's cool too. You can type it into the comments section. <laughs> as well. And I'll answer it as we go along. I'll find my other recipe and report back, but I'm going to have a glass of wine and see if yeah, he man. needs a refill. No, I think I'm good. Oh, okay, party on. Party on here. Right, last sip of wine. Back to business. So, um, welcome to Thursday Night Live uh, from Well Season Gourmet. And uh, this is one of my favorite things to get in, just like a cook, because uh, I uh, host a lot of uh, pop up these days. But normally I host a lot of uh, get togethers with my friends. And um, we usually just sit around a table and uh, you know, have beverages on an excess amount of time. So, this is one of my, um, you know, and these are the snacks I usually, uh, these are my gold snacks. Because um, they're fast, efficient, and you don't have to really, really uh, slay it away too much. And one of my favorite things to use in the kitchen is puff paste. And this is uh, the beef jerky enzymes, my one of my great beef snacks. Uh, but today we're going to have a bit wine because it's delicious and it can turn into anything. Okay. Now I'm going to take my uh, puff paste here right on my board. It's cracked in the middle, but it doesn't matter. It'll still cook really, really beautifully. Uh, and then I'm going to cut this into half or three quarters of an inch steps. This was one of my favorite uh, things my, uh, when I was a child to eat because it was convenient. My mom used to make this a lot. And I'm keeping up the tradition just by uh, doing that. Now, when you work with puff, you do not want your puff pastry to be warm. So pull it out of the fridge in the last second, and if it's uh, pliable, but somewhat uh, thaw, uh, somewhat half frozen, it is the most ideal. You know what, let's just cut this piece too. I usually trim it, but I'm going to cut this piece and I'm going to call it Quasimodo. Right? That sounds appetizing. Well, yeah, well. You eat with our eyes first. That's a thaw. Um, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Hold that. Anyway, yeah, hold on to this. We have a spot Any questions yet? No, everybody's just excited for the co op magazine. Amazing. Well, did you find your recipe yet? I did. What is it? Uh, hair wine. You know what? I'll skip that. Do you need some 
here. Awesome. We became Facebook friends now. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just uh, sending each other back. You know what? I'm going to reserve this part. Barb even has a designation from Facebook as top fan now. <laughs> no, seriously. I um, appreciate the support, Barb. Now, I'm going to uh, add this to your Christmas list. Also, I'm going to have a good party to still talk to you. With the show. Sorry, sorry, so top and the freezer. Now I'm going to grab my cheddar. You can do this liberally, you can use parmesan, you can use emmental, you can use gruyere. You know, it's kind of like East Coast move. And you'll put cheddar on apple pie over there. I thought it was a bit off, but once you get used to it, it is still odd to eat, but you know, it's, uh, it's actually quite tasty. My cheddar is on there, and then I'm going to take my thyme, and then I'm going to sprinkle it. Picking thyme is my uh, one of the <coughs> junior jobs in the kitchen. It's not as fun, but you know what? It makes all the difference. And you can put thyme sticks on there, but sticks are not edible. So whenever you're cooking, you have to really, really, really think about your guests and how everything is going to come together. You can't just do random moves, call it rustic or anything, uh, right? So please be wary of your guests and because ease of eating is equally as important uh, cooking delicious food and serving your guests. This is the last two times spreads. Oh, beautiful. Nice pinch of salt. Just very lightly. Goes in the 400 or 425 oven for about 10 minutes. Or until they're nice and hot. Those are perfect. Thank you. Let's get See how easy that is. It took about 5 minutes of work, but it all happened in front of your eyes. Now, this, again, another sheet of top. It's an exceptional thing to have in your... Uh, so, Chef, when you buy your puff pastry from Auto Co-op or wherever you're getting it from, it comes in a brick. So, you have to thaw it generally and... and it used to 
So right now, usually it's either rolled up sheets, uh, spicy hot Italian sausage of, uh, this is also a co-op's uh, own uh, brand. That was well, also the cheapest one. If it comes in a brick, you have to thaw it a little bit so you can uh, lay it flat, right? I uh, like brick being like this and that. A square, yeah. A square, yeah. But that used to be the old uh, method. I, would, I suggest please stick with the sheet versions. It's already stretched out and it will eliminate uh, the errors of the heat might get in that way. So, again, I didn't do anything as you can see. Just my sausage and puff. And I'm going to use my parchment paper to roll this over. And that's why you don't want your puff to get too warm. That it can get quite sticky. Now, Thank God I have a pastry hand, so I can live with it. But if this is cold, it will be way easier. And then, once this is done, what I like to do is, if you want to freeze this, you can totally freeze it. Uh, you can freeze it as a log. But I'm going to glaze it. Get it, in my, get it in my freezer. And also when you're done, maybe do a whole box of pop. And make uh, five of these, so ten of these, so you have you have it ready to go in your freezer. It goes into my firm freezer. Okay. And then when you're ready to bake it. Okay. When you're ready to bake it, you pull it in from your freezer. That's your TV, right? And um, and then you can cut it semi-frozen, which uh, will uh, will be better because uh, you are not going to be, uh, if you're like this dog, you are not going to be crushing layers. But, um, and also almost I can, as you can see, it cuts beautifully, way easier. Now uh, we got to glaze these two. So a little bit messy, but what is cooking with a little bit of a little bit of mess? Happening, I would like to start marinating my cucumber actually. I have some baby cucumbers here. I'm just going to pour my marinade on and go back to my uh, so they can get uh, nice and flavorsome. Some baby cucumbers from uh, Co op, they've been grown here in uh, Port Cucumber by a local farm. Garlic. I love these cooked pickles, they are very, very useful. Uh, to make it, it makes all the difference and gives tactful flavor to your vegetables. A little bit of herbs, a little bit of root cilantro, chili sauce, and fish sauce. Okay, and then, not but not least, last but not least. Also, cucumbers are widely available all year round and they are very, very cheap. And I will show you this snack, which is a uh, Okay. That's the thing, one of the good things about otters, they buy as much local as they can. So they're local cucumbers. Like there are so many people um, walking around with the local agenda but not actually meaning it. Right. They all say it's it's not it's not the it. these this is not for PR. They in line with they genuinely, genuinely are. Uh, yeah, it's the community. It's a nice community here that they would support each other very nice. Yeah. Chef, yeah, sorry, Gladys just would like to know what kind of sausage you're using with the puff pastry. She missed that. Uh, any fresh sausage would do. You can use hot dogs too. Um, but today I'm just using good old hot Italian sausage house brand from uh, Art of Co-op. Alright, my man, my man, blah, blah, blah. Ah, okay. My cucumbers are marinating. Like this. I don't need to glaze anything anymore. Okay, that's a cut. That's a cut. Chef, Trish would like to know if you can use regular long English cucumbers if you can't find the key ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any cucumber would do. Um, because this is not, this is a quick pickle, uh, the texture of the cucumber will be always crunchy. Okay? If you pick the cucumber, that's a different uh, curriculum. 
I don't train anybody on Pikmin anymore. Yeah. Uh, two pipes. It's a long, hard journey. I spent about uh, 30 years Pikmin. You know how to cook pickles? Otter co op. They have good pickles. What are they making? Uh, they're made for them. They're co op, right? Oh, really? Pickles. Yeah. I'm a pickle, so I'll just go try it. See? This is the snack number two. Oh, Okay, I'm a pickler. I'm a pickler, yeah. Kelly Hitler? No. I don't know who that is. Never mind. Alright, out of context again. We'll give it to my uh, uh, heritage. Yeah. Now, as you can see, I've been doing some talking, and we've been cooking for about 10 minutes. Three or four snacks are almost done. Good, I'm starving. Top chop, chef. Cameraman's about to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, toast your cucumbers every once in a while. Don't leave them alone. So, now, well, we're going to have a dip. We have to have a dip, right? It's one of my favorite uh, parts of the whole happy table is crispy things in the oven, salsas. So then we don't have a salsa, but we have some other things. <laughs> and and, uh, and wine. And dips and wine. Wine can wait. Uh, maple syrup and cherry vinegar. No. Gravy mustard. Smooth Dijon. And uh, that was funny actually. Maybe a pinch of herbs. So, what sauce. What kind of herbs are those, Chef? Uh, green onion and pasta. Or as we call it in Chambon, pot. Okay. And my silk tip. Let's transfer this to its uh, where it belongs. My puffs are looking good, right? Sausages, mustard. What would that pop? That's the dip for the sausages then? Okay. okay. I, I usually like to have it all, all over the place. Uh, now, by the time our pot sticks it down, I will show you how to put this uh, cucumber dish. Okay, here what I have again is a grated garlic, chili sauce, fish sauce, handful of cilantro. I'm going to pack some mint in there too. Mint, cucumber, Middle East, Thai, they're all in the same uh, category. So, cucumbers and mint, if you've never tried it, uh, are a great, great combo. You all love bologna? Love it. Italian bologna? More to them, that's probably one of my uh, uh, favorite daily meats to eat. I think it's very underrated. It's been, uh, you know, uh, looked down by a gourmet crowd. But um, I. Uh, I enjoyed more to them. I'm going to take this mustard dip also here. Again, yeah, this is a formal hand. And lightly add to this too. See, we got one sauce and few applications. Okay. There it goes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my cucumber. A nice uh, mint leaves, few of those mint leaves. Then, get your cucumber on, just like a burrito. See, we eat our vegetables, we eat our vegetables, right? Yes, is bologna a meat uh, vegetable? I should, I should pass as one. It's a staple for sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, I grew up on those. They, you get those all the time down south. Or fried bologna for breakfast with eggs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fried bologna or yeah. even sliced hot dogs. That's what Barb says. Barb says fried bologna. Barb knows favorite. what she's talking about. Yes. Barb, you're David's favorite. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, you guys gotta slow me down. We forgot the myth. Come on. You wanna say anything? What? Chef is uh, another glass of water. Another dip. And 
this one was done. Oh, what is going on tonight? One job, chef. You had one job. And I'm doing it right. The mint. I'm doing it right. I'm going back. I'm not taking a shortcut. I could have easily get all of you to uh, fake that, uh, fake it that there was mint in there. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's exhausting thinking it all the time. Hey. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, no. Living on the oh, edge. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, that'll, get, that'll get it done if you're baking. Chef, you're on fire tonight. I'm on it. Yeah. Bada bing. He's here all week. Am I? Don't forget to tip your waitress. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> So if you were in less of a hurry, those pickles, you can keep them in the fridge for quite a while, right? Uh, no, you can't. Okay. So because what's they will uh, soften up. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. But um, you, uh, the whole trick to this is you take a spongy vegetable, such as daikon or polarati uh, or cucumber, uh, that breaks quite easily with salt. And then you add some acid and sugar and some uh, salty accent to it. And then you consume it as fast as you can. If you wait on it too too much, these vegetables are gonna go limp because of the due to high acidity. See in Pikmin, we control the acidity. Uh, so that therefore we can keep our vegetables crisp. So Marla says Marla says these little roll-ups that you're making now would be a fun, fresh addition to a charcuterie plate. She's totally right. I uh, Unless you're doing the show, you to play for 100 people. <laughs> <laughs> Not in COVID time, Chef. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually, yeah. Add this to your uh, Shakiri plate. So, yes, Marla, you can invite me over when COVID's are done and we'll have charcuterie at your house. No problem. That's well, probably my favorite thing to eat, charcuterie. I love it. Like, it's sitting there with a you know, crusty bread and just like munching on cheese and meat that just had pickles. That's the good life. That is the best. Alright, let's get your hands also a little bit greasy. So if you couldn't find mortadella, you could use ham. You can use prosciutto, you can use ham, you can use bologna, you can use uh, honey ham. And anything that's cooked will work perfectly. perfectly. And, and porky, it sounds like porky. Porky? Porky. Oh, porky, yeah. Anything porky. Yeah. And then my uh, marinade, just around the plate a little bit. Yeah, I I got the cucumber flavor in the marinade, and I'm putting it on top. So shabby. <laughs> I just recently got used to that word, and it's just because I uh, cook, uh, teach cooking commercially. People love the whole the romance of chef and chef and chef. I'm like, uh, the dishes that I've always worked, the C word was always very appropriate. So, um, Chef? Yes. That, that C word? That C. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, it smells good in here. That's the thing about puff pastry and cheese in the oven, it always smells like butter is cooking. Okay. Two more minutes. Why don't we get you started with some uh, cucumber slices? Yes, why don't I? Let's just uh, pass this around. Stop biting on things. I'll send this over to David. See yeah. how he likes it. We'll get some like critical feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please do. I, uh, I, 
I value your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I just turned my heat up all the way. I'm gonna grill some chicken for you, and then uh, we are gonna make one of my favorite things to eat: devil eggs or uh, angel eggs. Is that what it was, sir? I think so. Yeah. Angel eggs. Yeah. So let's just. Uh, I hollowed uh, some of my eggs here and scoop my yolk out. Uh, these are six-minute eggs. Uh, they have a nice uh, apricot in center, as we refer them in Turkish. It's gummy, but it's not liquid, or it's not very, very hard. Every time you cut an egg, please wipe the plate, so you can work nice, neat, and clean, which is important in the kitchen. Tell me again, what did you call the center when it's like that? Uh, apricot. Okay. That's, that's how we refer to it in Turkish. Yeah. It, it's almost like a dry apricot texture, which is uh, like Yeah, this. yeah. It is... Um, um, one, of the, one of the hardest tasks is actually just how to boil a perfect egg, and I get asked this question a lot because I was an egg guy. Uh, unfortunately, there is not a single method that I can uh, tell you. It completely depends on your body of water amount, and, and the amount of eggs that you put in. Uh, there are nice little tricks of like tempering eggs. I usually just uh, run my eggs under uh, warm water before I cook them to bring their temperature up because uh, egg white is... Uh, in, in high heat uh, can seize up quite easily. You want a custardy white. That is something super soft, not a plastic one. Plastic one means that somebody just cracked the heat up and took off. That's not ideal, obviously. Now, here I have a bunch of scrap meat that I caught in Barnett Marine Park today. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was alive. Ah, you're funny. <laughs> anyway. Um, that's dungeon scrap. It is one of uh, one of life's great pleasures, and it's, it's a gift that we can have. This is G65, uh, you know, round, all year round, and at dirt cheap prices. You know the trick to buy these by crab. Um, normally, when you go to fish places, uh, there is a uh, really immaculate looking crab, and then there is the big ones that just misses a single claw or maybe two legs. Those crab prices go about like 40% down. What I usually do is I buy two of those, now I have two body meat, I have all the legs that I want, and I have two claws still. So, so it's a great way of buying it. I, uh, I cooked it in salt water, about six to seven minutes. I took the organs out, took the head out, six to seven minutes, and then I, um, then I just uh, deshelled it. In here also there is escalate pepper. Escalate pepper is a pepper from Spain. Uh, it is used for its um, aroma rather than spiciness. And to buy 100 gram of it, you need a mini mortgage. It's quite expensive, but a little bit goes a long way. It's in there too. I have a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of mustard, and chopped herbs, cilantro, green onion. <laughs> and they were sucking on a cucumber. This These are good. This mortadella roll is really delicious, and you know the most surprising thing is the mint. I was a little bit just, I, I, I couldn't picture the combination in my head with the mortadella and the mint, but Marla, this needs to go on your charcuterie board. It is a delicious combination. Looks very good. Yeah. Thank you. All for the, all for the people, just like on the call, right? Uh -huh. All right, let's just pull these uh, puffs sticks out. This would be good in the spring and the summer as well. It's good in light. It would yeah. work well. Yeah. Now, these. That's what I'm looking for. I, I can't see them. Yep, you there you go. A nice uh, butter, golden brown, cheese is melted, and it's super light for the sauce, which means that the whole structure is expanded and it went up. Let's feed friends some uh, puff sticks. Or uh, at the party, we call them puff sticks. So Andrea says that Dr. Bonnie Henry says that no one's allowed uh, from outside the home. So she only has to share these snacks with her husband. She's very excited that uh, she doesn't have, she has an excuse to eat all the snacks by herself. I, uh, I would send the husband to the boys' night and then eat them all of my Play. <laughs> you give this to a kid, give this to a, anybody that we have, right? Yeah. Then he passes around to so, Chef, you can make those ahead of time. They're really good at room temperature, right? The 
that. So oh, it's, yeah. Also, it's ideal for it to cool down a little bit. The more it cools down, the crispier it's going to get. And uh, it's, it's literally barely, uh, barely work because we literally took a cup, cut it into uh, segments, and then, uh, yeah, you just, you just literally uh, so tell me, sprinkle some cheese and uh, birds and salt, the, and that's it. What cheese did you use on the chef? Was it cheddar? Just good old Canadian cheddar. cheddar. Old cheddar. But, now, but yeah. it's a good way to use up odds and ends of cheese that you might have in the fridge, right? Like maybe a bit of Swiss or some Gruyere or something. Whatever you like. Your favorite cheese. I kind of like a semi-hard cheese for this application. And the reason for that is um, semi-hard cheese still has... Actually, Um, because it still has some moisture, so it doesn't split in a split of fat and be greasy. And young cheeses are a bit too have a bit too much moisture. Uh, piping bag, my filling goes back in. Right. Down as much as you can. Roe is salmon, caviar is sturgeon, correct? Uh, no, not necessarily. Roe ro is fish eggs. Roe can be anything. Um, salmon roe is quite larger. Caviar is... Uh, the it is. The caviar is uh, the sturgeon caviar. Um, incredibly delicious. I grew up on it. I ate tons of caviar when I was a child. I had a happy childhood. Uh, um, I'm kidding, my uh, uncle was living in Russia. So uh, we always had big jars of beluga can dragging our home at our disposal. And it's a delicious thing to eat. That's a funny thing to have tons of access to. As a yeah, we had, we had, we, we had tons. Uh, I grew up really good quality artisanal vodka. And I was allowed to drink about six, seven, whatever. It didn't matter. Um, so you used the good vodka that washed down your beluga caviar? Well, I was six or seven. Yeah. Poor thing. <laughs> They used to get me drunk and make fun of me too. Kind of uh, like we do now. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. And this is your little devil eggs with uh, spicy crab and uh, oh, and a little bit of cilantro sprigs on top just to make everything uh, super. Uh, this was an entertainment. Now let's check up on our. Uh, Oh, 
wasn't this easy? We have four dishes already. Yeah. It's it's it just takes a little bit of prep time and a lot of enthusiasm. So this can wait here because I want to get my chicken going. Now for the chicken, let's squeeze our uh, laptop here. It's gonna get smoky in here. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm looking forward to it. It's usually uh, my house is uh, like this every day. Oh boy, fire my face on vacation. So go easy, guys. Stay home, day. Professionals. All right. Now in this bowl, I pre-marinated and stewed my chicken, so I don't want you to just like sit and watch me. Uh, Painfully good chicken here, stirring. I have uh, fish sauce, soy sauce, cilantro, ginger, garlic, and uh, chicken breast cut into little cubes. Okay. This is one of my favorite ways to eat chicken. And in each between each chicken slice, the piece, there is a young leaf. Now, if you don't find young leaves at your grocery store, you can always use green onions that is completely fine. Oh man, this smells good. So Chef, you could do these skewers ahead of time, if and when we're ever able to have company in here. 24 hours ahead of time, you can do these. Okay. And let it sit in the marinade. Let's go, no, 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 let's go up to eight. Okay, so we And this, and I'm taking the marinade and I'm going to bring it to a boil so I can place my chicken. This has raw chicken in it, so you would like to just take your temperature over 150 so that you don't have to guess. This is one of the things you can do. All right, so let's grab our uh, crispy sausage rolls. How oh, cheap these are. Right? So cute. Oh, no. Now let's get a monster right in the middle of the plate. Spoon for the monster because you think about our guests. Well, I should have done better. Okay, and then throw a little uh, pig in the blankies. Run around quick. I feel like Martha Stewart right there, just in the spirit. Just in the holidays. So Chef, Marla just asked if we had Escalette in the store, and we do, but if you couldn't use S, if you can't access Escalette, what, what would be a good substitution? Any chili would do to be honest. Any chili that you like, um, you can use spot. I wouldn't use chipotle, but the crab, they can overpower it pretty easily, right? Yeah. Um, you can get okay that like, first things first, what you need to adjust is your spice level. So you can't just cry in and go to town with it. But as long as you have some form of accent uh, from the chili, uh, or some essence or whatnot, and this and that, uh, you can use any chili you would like. Anything goes. Uh, if you're uh, don't eat pork, you can use a uh, merguez sausage and make other ganoushes served with it. So the options are quite endless. How are the bites? Excellent. Everything's so good. Shelly has a question, Chef, about the uh, uh, marinade. Why are you using fish sauce and soy soy sauce? They both add salt flavoring, but is there something else that you get from the combination? There's lime juice. Okay, fish sauce is quite strong and very forward. And you need some form of salt component. So it's just like a nice balance of soy and fish. Um, and then uh, and then I have my other flavoring. Now that being said, there is white wine vinegar, lime juice in there, just to balance that saltiness. And then a uh, little bit of maple syrup as well. We're going to need to take a commercial break. Those are awesome. What is? What is? The sausage. Oh, you're eating the sausage? Oh, yes. Yeah. Can we? It's going to need a moment. Yes. Uh, just sorry, to sorry to interrupt. The camera just went fuzzy. I think that was because David was refocusing his light on the sausage rolls. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't blame them. It's one of my favorite things to eat. Those are excellent. As you can see, uh, a little bit of enthusiasm and a little bit of uh, prep. So there's, there's no peanut sauce in this, so this is not a saute. Um, yeah, I mean, it's skewered meat. Like, uh, how, how, how are you going to... How are you going to claim a uh, claim name for it? You know what I mean? Uh, it can be called kebabs, or it can be called, hey, we need to cook this piece of meat, so let's not burn our hands, so let's put it on a steak. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be satay, it could be anything. But I uh, usually just, uh, it's a great way of eating uh, chicken. As you can see, it's nice and charring. Gently flip them over. I'm sorry, you said you can make these ahead of time, but would you freeze them in the marinade if you were making them? Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't freeze them in the marinade. Uh, because, uh, what? Because there's only two people in the house right now, theoretically, Chef. And so, if you're making a batch of them and you have nobody to entertain, you know, if not everybody lives with David who can eat 24 skewers of chicken. That's it? Oh, yeah, we got to talk about this. Hey. He tries. Chicken breast is probably one of my favorite proteins. <laughs> people, uh, why do people do not like chicken breast? Because I don't it's know. Dry. Because exactly. they overcook it so often. Yes. Exactly. So there are two types of people. People who can cook chicken breast and people who cannot cook chicken breast. Please don't blame the animal. The poor thing didn't do anything to you. Um, you just need to uh, cook the chicken breast nice and gentle. Not sorry, not nice and gentle, but just to the right point that it is uh, it is nice and juicy and relaxed. Okay, I agree with David. The sausage rolls are delicious, but you know what makes it is the uh, mustard sauce. Yeah, sausage and mustard uh, goes really, really well together. Ah! Let's see where we're at. Now my uh, sauce is really, really bubbling and I'm just going to check consistency on it. Nice. I just want it as a nice little dip. Do we have a watch powder? Yeah. Yes, right behind you, Chef, where the wine glasses are, there's a beautiful powder right on top of the glasses. It's creepy that I find such a good one, just like that. What's it doing with that? Um, Oh man, that fits perfect. Okay, now, let's just do something. Sorry, give me a second there. Now let's get our... Uh... So Chef, we have a local potter whose products we sell here at the store and she made that platter for one of our private shopping nights last night. That's why it's in the cupboard. It's Ooh. beautiful. It is quite beautiful. I uh, work here every once in a while. And I've never seen it in back so far. It right? just arrived yesterday. Amazing. So Barb has a question about the mustard and the sauce. Yeah. You used the Goa Gold Dijon, right? Well, of course I did. That was what went into it? Yeah. Okay. There you go, Barb. It was the Goa Dijon mustard. Now, let's touch our chicken breasts. And it's a dump. Man, it is smoky in here. Where's Fireman Dave? You know, I like to smoke when I drink, so uh, there's not a lot of that. Alright. As you can see, cooked food doesn't take too, too much work. A lot, little bit of enthusiasm goes a long way. And uh, these snacks also uh, are very good when you watch football. Which I have no patience for, but uh, you might be enjoying it. You come on to all your crappy Christmas uh, specials and eat snacks. Yeah. And chicken breast is a great snack because it is uh, really um, it's a nice lean meat and it's uh, one of the healthier ones. Then I'm going to grab the rest of my cilantro because nothing goes to waste. You know what? Let's just grab a handful here. A little green onion here. A little green onions there. This is our final snack for the night, the fifth one. A little bit of chicken uh, skewers marinated in fish sauce. And what's the sauce on the side, Chef? Sauce? 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 Sauce?
It is a nightmare. Just boil it up. So you heated it through, and are you supposed to dip the skewer in the marinade now? Yeah. No, you can dip it, you can screw it over. It's a very loose marinade just to give it up buff salt. Huh? You know what? Since we're uh, doing everything right, I'd like to garnish this with a little vine measures also. So fancy. Of course. Anything, nothing but the end. Nothing but the best for you. For you Yeah. That's you. This has been so good. Right? So good, so I'm, easy. I'm, I'm like, on time this time, too. Really, even. Yeah. So, deviled eggs with crab. We have the cheese straws. Yeah. Or cheese Pop sticks. Pop sticks. Pop sticks. Pop sticks. That's what we in the kitchen. No, stop talking. Okay, what do they call them in the kitchen? No, stop talking. <laughs> you just cross it between us. Like, it sounds like sticks, but... Uh, yeah, pop, pop sticks. Hey. Yeah. Our sponsor is family friendly, chef. Mm. Uh, and then we got the sausage rolls. Get your puff fixer, butter cool. What was the other one? I'm sorry, the first one. The cucumber rolled more together. That was like the surprise, like sleeper hit of the night for me. Not something new every week. We just uh... the morning fella was a sleeper hit for me because the uh, uh, the, the meat in there totally yeah. was like a really. Combo. So, and a whole is on men too, nothing, uh, you know. Yeah, nothing so, uniform. Because I, you know, uniformity is for people in uniform. Because they're lovely. Obviously not for you. Huh? Obviously uniformity is not for you. No, no, I'm, uh. But it's required. Uniformity? We can't be old like, uh, myself. Or, okay. uh, we need decent people in society. Yeah, that's really good. So, so easy, and it's not overcooked. It's uh, because uh, well, things take less time than you would think that it's good. People just cook things just to, you know that, just to make sure portion of cooking. Though, though that's the part when everything gets ruined. And I always say that to friends in the kitchen, they say that one of the greatest wisdoms in cooking is no knowing when to stop cooking. Rather than um, how long you put in this and that, like, you know, because he travels, he travels, and uh, there's eventual. Yeah, I think people forget that when you take the food off the pot, off the stovetop, or off the grill, and you pile it on a plate, it's all still cooking. And especially the stuff on the bottom layer, if you're stacking your food like Chef did with the skewers, the bottom layer is going to stay hot for quite a long time, and heat. Yeah, residual heat is going to keep. He, he troubles. Uh, you, you take your hand and you press on a bit of hot grill about five seconds. That's a third degree burn. So if it, 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 it don't do that, by the way. Yeah, yeah just professionals only. Right. Um, Did she try that? Sure. It's yeah. really good. And I'm not surprised that it's delicious because you made it. But it's really fresh and light tasting. And I think when people have appies, everybody sort of defaults to like the cheese and the melted cheese. <laughs> This. And we did have some melted cheese tonight, which, don't get me wrong, I love some cheese. And it was delicious on the cheese straws, but I think a lot of people sort of default to those really heavy flavors all the time. But this is so easy and so It's good. light, it's flavorsome, yes. it's healthy. Uh, that being said, the North American cheese is eating is a little bit different animal. I've never seen anything like that. What do you mean? This, whenever we consume cheese in North America, it's consumed a lot. Handfuls of this and that. that no, no, normally, we don't eat cheese like that anywhere else. I've never seen it. So it's delicious. Maybe it's Switzerland. Uh, it, it is delicious, but uh, like you eat, if you order a large nachos, that's like 200 pounds of cheese. Nachos. I love nachos. Back to nachos. And that's going to be my Christmas dinner. Uh, your benchmark for cheese consumption in North America is nachos? Yeah, that's the first thing. I don't know. What, what else? Oh, what, uh, cheese straws? Okay, this is getting really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Abbey's tonight were paired with um, the Otter Co-op Angry Otter uh, Community Red, their Community White, which is their white blend, and the Chardonnay, which is delicious. My, For me, the, my favorite pairing was the Community Black.
white with the cheese sticks. So the cheese That's, and the white, the acidity and the cheese is just a perfect combo. It is also a very classical combo. It's like butter, pastry, and cheese, and thyme. So that's uh, that's that's very neutral balance. Yeah. So uh, I found my other recipe. Oh no! We're Are you excited it. for this? Bakery? No. So it's a bacon tomato avocado toast <laughs> with poached egg. But there's no hollandaise on this. This is what's missing. So maybe we should tag team next time and put some hollandaise sauce on our poached egg. You know how I like to eat the whole thing? Actually, have you ever had crab cake Benedict? Oh. Mm. But I'm not talking about, you know, I go to the restaurant, there's breadcrumbs in there, there is uh Are we talking about next Thursday? <laughs> yeah, 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 we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm talking about just crab, and what I do is I usually take soft butter, and I shape them into patties and put them in the fridge. So when butter coagulates, it holds its form, then you can bread it. And once you fry it across the outside, inside the butter melts, put an egg on it and a hollandaise, that sounds terrible. That sounds cool. Oh, that is, sounds awful. We should do a French class here. Maybe, uh, yeah, we should do a bunch of French class. I think we're hooked up through Christmas with our holiday classes, but in January, sure. Absolutely. I'm French class. So, a couple times. So, I'm sad that our friends from Otter Club couldn't be here tonight to join us, but they are so amazing. I honestly, I can't thank everybody enough for participating in these classes. I cannot believe it is the middle of November. We've been doing online classes since the middle of March. Since, uh, okay, the end of March. So we're in like month eight of this. And I can't even tell you how much our sort of community here in Langley has kind of rallied around each other, all of our business community. And Water Co-op is one of the leaders in the business community in British Columbia. Actually in Canada, uh, Federated Co-op is a huge leader, but in British Columbia, Water Co-op is a huge leader. In fact, Jack Nicholson, not the Jack Nicholson, but the Jack Nicholson, who last year won the CEO of the Year Award. Ooh, yeah, for Water Co-op. And they won that day, he won that award with his whole team because they do such an amazing job and they really embrace local. They buy local, they support local, they're supporting me. I'm not a competitor to Otter Co-op. They don't, uh, anyhow, it's about sort of helping everybody have a good, make a good living and they know that I shop there, they know you're gonna be a member now. $10, I'm gonna buy you a membership. Oh my gosh, that's your Christmas gift. I'm gonna buy you an Otter membership for Christmas. That's, that's good, I like the price range. Yes, so me I can, too. I can get you two sharpies. Two sharpies. That's a good high for my mom. <laughs> <coughs> well, Maybe a green one and a red one. Nah, I don't um, know why. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, you I know, but look, I, as I always say, that I was uh, stuck in Vancouver downtown for the longest time, and the relationships are great. I love my friends. I love my community there, too. But here, the sense of community is, is just incredible, and people are not just saying that. They're genuinely care for each other and support each other. Um, and you know who leads that out here? It's Otter Club. Otter Club genuinely buys and supports local 100% of the time. They employ hundreds of people in our community, uh, in all of our communities, and they support our local farmers and they support other local businesses. So if you, you have a choice, not if you have a choice, you have a choice where you spend your money. My choice is Otter Co-op. That's where I spend my money. That's where you'll find this guy from now on that he's a member. Although my question is directly. Yes, because uh, you're here every Thursday. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to find it. Yes, yeah. Um, also, yeah, I, I'd like to thank to everybody for their support. Uh, also, these Thursday nights uh, saved my life. They saved your life? Yeah, I was. Uh, I lost my puppy last March. Uh, yeah. It was hard times. It's a bell. I uh, was in my room for a month, and uh, this was the reason why I came out of my room. I know. Uh, to the internet famous here. Not that. <laughs> but it, it just got me out of my misery, got out of my headspace, and uh, my... Uh, habits. And, uh, and uh, saved my life. So thank, thanks for your support. I really need that. Oh, Chef, we love you. 
Um, but we couldn't have done these segments without all of our partners, including Otter Co-op, especially Otter Co-op. They're great partners for us, and we have another Otter Co-op segment happening before the holidays, I think. But all of our uh, Thursday nights are spoken for with different partners. We have some really good wine segments coming up. We have lots of cool stuff happening. Legends Hall signed up too for us. Oh, they did? Fun. So I think with, unfortunately, because of the current situation with the numbers increasing with COVID, we aren't able to invite people into our kitchen like we did a few weeks ago, unfortunately, even with the safety protocols in place. So um, you're stuck with Dennis, David, myself, and Nikki, who's at the front of the store right now. So Dennis, um, <laughs> David, and Nikki can eat all the snacks. Don't you worry about it. Dennis and I will drink all the wine. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> they stop it. You know who else is stuck? Who? You. You're stuck. I, I didn't pick it. this. I'm, 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 this, I'm, I'm trapped in here. I'm I just like, this, is <laughs> this guy chose me. I could have been an athlete or an engineer, but, but this is what I'm doing. I'm doing my time. I'm thinking not an athlete, more of like a video game professional or a. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I heard I heard worse things about this. Yeah. I think you're kind of short to be a professional athlete. Maybe no, no, what I'm saying, like, if this wasn't given, then something else was given. So oh. Like, uh, cheap, uh, oh. Close to the ground and, uh... Yeah. This is built for comfort, not for speed. That's what I always tell David. Yeah. I'm, like, definitely not a professional athlete. Either. She's very easy to catch. I'm very easy. <laughs> I'm like the crab. Yep. <laughs> very easy to catch. Oh, so, no. Cheers to you guys. Cheers to you, Chef. Thanks for Cheers. another great Thank night. You. Thanks, everybody, Thank for joining you. us. And thanks for supporting Co-op, Otter Co-op in particular. Um, they really deserve your business. They work hard for it. And, um, yeah, go see your Otter Co-op and buy a membership. And if you have questions about anything you saw or learned tonight, you can email askachef at buzzseason.ca. And if we don't know the answer, we'll make Chef answer the questions. I, I got all the answers for you. So you'll find a link to all the auto co-op locations on our Facebook feed, and uh, this video will live here, so if you need to refer back to it, you can. It'll also be archived on our website, and I think you might also find it on the auto co-op page tomorrow. So cheers to everybody. We will see you here Thursday night at 5.30.